You're watching TVC News. Now, there are moves by the state government in Nigeria to return primary and secondary schools to the missions that originally established them. Ekiti and Anambra states are taking the lead in this regard. Ekiti State Governor Kaede Fayemi recently returned Christ's school in Adwekiti to the Anglican Church of Nigeria. In Anambra State, many schools are wearing a new look after the return to missionaries. Former military ruler General Yakubu Gawong took over all the mission schools across the country uh, immediately after the end of the civil war. Now, his regime came up with the takeover policy on education. Then the idea was to ensure a uniform standard of education across the country. But the question Nigerians have been asking over the years is if the takeover policy was a blessing or a setback for the education sector. Well, joining me now is uh, leadership and communication strategist, Dotton Ojon. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good, good morning. morning. It's good to be here. Right. Now, this issue has been on the front burner for some time, and it has been laced with some sort of controversy. The initial idea was that state governments take over so they can plan the education sector. Yeah. And now there have been calls for it to return back to uh, the missionaries or the original owners. What do you make of this? and Where do you stand? Yes, um, from um, 1970 when the takeover started, and now a lot um, of things have changed really in the education sector apart from the capacity collapse that uh, is evident all over the space of our education system and uh, poor infrastructure. Mm. We also have um, the issue of population um, explosion b between that time and now. So these are some of the things that uh, have really affected education. But be uh, as it may, you discover that um, the intent of um, the government of um, that year was actually uniformity, mm. was to create standard. Absolutely. Uh, and unfortunately, over the years, these um, have not been achieved, owing to the fact that, number one, what we have in, um, in, in Nigeria as far as policies are concerned are administrative policies and not government policies. When you have government policies, for example, if your administration leaves office, the other one that is coming is going to continue to build on it. That's so there's government no, being yes, a continuum. On, yes, there's no, there's no, um, uh, this idea of government being a continuum is absent from our own mindset. So when you have a situation like this, it could be in education, it could be in the other sector. When you take a step forward, there's all possibility that if another government comes, that um, those steps can actually be reversed. So that is the crux of why it failed, or that, that, that the plan failed. Yes, that, that, that was a major reason why, why the So plan if it had come. continued as government being a continuum and there was a following uh, of the administrative process in this in the education, you're saying that it would have been successful? Yes, it would have been very, very successful. What is the intent of government? For example, you discover that even before 1954, the northern part of the nation was running an 873 system of education. The southern um, part of the nation was running a 753, a 763 mm. system of education. So there was no uniformity. There's no possibility that somebody who has finished um, the elementary school in the, in the south cannot be compared to somebody who is even in secondary school in the north. So the idea is that when we have an, a, a, um, a, na a national uniformity, that you can tell that it doesn't matter where you, you, you've been educated from Kano or Kaduna or from Lagos, at least the standard of education, the expectation of the nation will be the same. But in that wise, it wasn't working out. So the intent was uniformity, which was wonderful for any nation. No nation, as we can continue to make the noise of um, fed federated unit of the nation. But when it comes to education, there must be a sense of uniformity, uniformity. and growth. So, so in, in moving forward now, how do you think this should work out? Seeing that uniformity was the idea and uniformity is necessary, yeah. as you have said, because uh, there are calls that it should be returned back to the missionaries. And some schools you, have even started with that. Yes, you see, all we, all we need as a nation now is um, somebody who is going to set the pace for us as far as education is concerned. And unfortunately, we have submitted our destiny to the hand of private individuals who had private schools. The, the intention of government is that when we look at these private schools indirectly, though, we'll be able to set standard in the public school. Unfortunately, commercial, uh, commercialization has robbed us of that fact. Now, if the schools are returned to the mission, maybe the mission will be able to set a standard 
for the government to follow maybe. because maybe it's maybe because there are a lot of things that have changed. Now we talk about what it costs to run education. It was not what it cost initially. So the mission are supposed to even commit a lot of more money than they used to commit. Then secondly, greed has also crept into the mission. Everybody is thinking about what they can benefit from the Nigerian society. The mission you are having today is different from the mission you have in, in the in the 60s 70s. and the 70s. So these are some of the implications and complications in the entire process. So don't think that when we submit some of these schools to the mission school, that in, um, to the mission or the missionaries, that a miracle will have happen overnight. There's a system that has been uh, that has been broken already. Right. There's a system of capacity, system of character that if we do not build, then it may not actually achieve the it's desired purpose. result. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Ojo, for your time. It's, it's a pleasure on this. Yeah. There are moves by state governments in Nigeria to return primary and secondary schools to the missions that originally established them. Ekiti and a number of states are taking the lead in this regard. Ekiti State Governor Kayade Fayemi recently returned Christ School in Adwekiti to the Anglican Church of Nigeria. In a number of states, many schools are wearing a new look after their return to missionaries. Now, former military ruler General Yakubu Gowan took over all the mission schools across the country immediately after the end of the Civil War. His regime came up with the takeover policy on education. Then the idea was to ensure a uniform standard of education across the country. But the question Nigerians have been asking over the years is if the takeover policy was a blessing or a setback for the education sector. Joining me now is leadership and communication strategist, Dr. John. Dr. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Nice to see you. It's good to be here. Right. Now, since after the Civil War that uh, the takeover policy came on board, we've seen, you know, a nose diving of the system. But the little, the drama that took place that one can really hold on to was the one in Anambra State where uh, it got to the level where the Nigeria Union of Teachers even hit the street to say we don't want uh, uh, schools to be returned to the missions. Yeah. And then from, the, from former Governor Chingo Kimbade Nuju to Chris Ngigi and then to Peter Obi, well, Peter Obi decided to, against all odds, uh, took the case to the court and he won. Yeah. Now, as it is right now, why is it important for schools to be returned to missionaries or to missions? Okay, I, I think um, when you look at it from um, the level of moral decadence, mm -hmm. just a little, that's a little um, above um, the issue of competence, yeah. then you will want the missions to come in because in our mindset, in our views, um, we believe that uh, the involvement of mission actually um, led to the building of character in, in the earlier and years values. and values. So, uh, but is it still like that? No, uh, uh, may, maybe it's going to be a little bit better than what we have presently. Right. But again, there are fears here, here and there. Um, I, I, I love the, the, the example you gave as to the NU, um, NUT people mm -hmm. hitting the street to protest. It's because of the fact that people are concerned about the security of their job too. You don't want to solve a problem and create another, another one. You understand? <laughs> so th these are some of the implications. And in, in fairness, if you look at it now, as we speak now, we have what we call education traditions in Nigeria. We have the, I think about three of them, the indigenous tradition, we have the Islamic tradition, then we have the Western tradition. If you look at it, over the year, I think the indigenous tradition was able to build more moral in the life of people. But again, there was a disconnect between um, um, formality and what the indigenous kind of education was actually um, 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 given. That's the pre-colonial -colon era. Okay. Now, if you look at it from this perspective, when the Western and the Islamic um, um, kind of tradition came, they built on what they met on ground. Right. But what we have now, there seems to be a total disconnect. What government is offering now is you just go to school, you get a certificate, because that is what the society and the community wants at this point present moment. And nobody is concerned about the values any longer. Nobody is concern, concerned about the morals any longer. So that's why the mission is now coming to say, okay, we cannot continue to build competence without character. Mm. So if we come in, we are going to build character and build people that also will be competent. So if you look at it from that angle, I think it's important. All right. The argument from that, from that window actually would look really beautiful. But another concern is the issue of funding. Because we know that the w w churches and uh, mosques, in fact, religious you know, organizations are charity organizations. They mm -hmm. don't pay taxes and they, they, they thrive on the charity and contribution from members here and there, which sometimes they have a lot of money, other times they don't have money at all, yeah. depending on how it is. But as it is right now, 
whether the missions have the monies and the funds to keep the education at that level that we are talking about is a lot of concern to Nigeria. It is. If the government decides to hands up. Yes, it is a lot of concern because if you if you are um, a student of history, you will know that majority of funds that were committed to sponsoring of education in those earlier mm. years were foreign funds. They were given by foreign donors. Mm. I remember the, yes, I remember the Reverend Father in my community. We run back to, to Rome to get funds to support the school, mm. to get water system working and all that. Now, Nigerian churches have become flamboyant. I doubt whether we now have the moral justification to go abroad to continue to look for funds here and there. And even besides, and besides that, uh, Dr. the point there is that we have seen some of the churches establish schools right now. And many of the schools they establish even normal, regular Nigerians cannot afford. No, that, that, that's no, Mike. Don't let us mix things up. Okay. This that's the little difference between the Orthodox mm. and the Pentecostalism. The major. But they're, they're all no, missions. No, no, no. The major, <laughs> the major universities we have today mm. that ordinary men cannot attend were created by the Pentecostal churches. Okay. But the mission schools they are talking about now are going to be returned to the Orthodox mm. churches. So the we still early have, missionaries. Yes, we okay. still have hope. In, in this regard. All right, so yeah. there's there's hope. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Dr. John, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Right. Now, there are moves by state governments in Nigeria to return primary and secondary schools to the missions that originally established them. Ikiti and Anambra states are taking the lead in this regard. Ikiti State Governor Kayode Fayemi recently returned Christ School in Adwikiti to the Anglican Church of Nigeria. In a number of states, many schools are wearing a new look after their return to missionaries. But the question Nigerians have been asking over the years is if the takeover of policy was a blessing or a setback for the education sector. Joining me is leadership and communication strategist Doton or John Doton. Thank you for joining us on TV Breakfast. Here. Yeah. Now I want us to look at the implications and perhaps the complications of uh, this um, policy if it is going to be implemented mm -hmm. because the essence so why there was a takeover in the first place was to unify how do we begin to unify and what is the implication for teachers the students and perhaps the state at large okay let's begin that um, at this moment in time uh, there's a general capacity collapse in our education system and we are as a nation we are actually looking forward to seeing perhaps a group of people or a person or an organization that's going to set a standard for us to follow. Either we say that or not, I think that's what we are looking f um, at now. So if uh, the missionaries are coming to take over or the state governments are actually returning the schools to their original owners, maybe, maybe we'll get to a point where we we'll have them, the schools that will be returned as, um, um, as what we'll be looking for to, test, to set standard in our education system. But there are other complications here and there because you talk about, you, you should think about what happens to the teachers there. Absolutely. You should think about the fact that how many of our population can some of these missionary schools actually take care of? Mm. Because as at the time in the realm of 1970 to 1975, when these schools were totally um, given back to government, you discover that we are just a people of about 70, 80 million uh, uh, in population. But now, now we are talking about 200, 200 million. million people. So these are some of the things that need to be factored in even when we agitate for this return. And how about the students? What okay. are the implications? I, I think the students will be better off because now the missionaries, if you, if you are judging them with what they've done in time past, they are bringing competence, I mean academic competence and character on board. If you like it or not, what we are facing now is a general collapse of capacity and character. So if we can have um, the missionaries take over the schools or we have the state government return it to them, there's all possibility that we are going to build a total student, a total student that is sound in, when it comes to academics and also moral because either we like it or not, we still look up to our religious institutions as a very great agent of socialization that can build character and instill morals in the but people. But you would agree with me that uh, the missionaries looking at the population we have now may not have the capacity to fund the schools. So that there are talks about perhaps there needs to be 
a reworking of the plans where the state government comes in to support uh, one way or the other? Of course, there's going to be a major reworking, and I, 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 I sincerely thank you for bringing in that aspect. I want to prepare Nigerians that to know that the kind of mission school they will have now may be different from the ones they had before. They should be ready to pay because education, either we like it or not, it's not cheap. Even if you have the state government still donate or support, there will still be need for the missionaries to charge. You know why? Because we have seen state government schools not working, despite the fact that there are subventions here and there, money is being pumped into it. It shows that whatever provision the government is making for public school is not enough. Mm. The United Nations is uh, actually um, clamoring for a 25% budgetary provision, Absolutely. allocation for education. But as we speak now, I doubt whether we have a state that was, I think one state did 10% some years back. I don't know whether we have a state presently in Nigeria that is doing up to 10% allocation to education. That's why when the Oyo State government said it's going to prioritize education, everybody is happy. So whatever the government is bringing to support the missionaries will not be enough. So it shows that at the end of the day, students will still pay. So don't let us create an impression of a missionary school that is going to be sent See? in academics. Um, we, we help us build the character of, of the people, and at the end of the day, we are not going to pay a couple. No, it's not going to be like that. So in the end, what do you see this achieving if it works effectively? If it works e effectively, really, the only thing, the major thing it will achieve is to have set a standard. Because we need, we urgently need a standard as we speak now. We need uh, somebody that's going to blaze the tray as far as standard is concerned in education so that we can actually use that as a benchmark that, oh, if this person can do it this way, we can also do it. As we speak now, it's like we have submitted our destiny into the hand of capitalists, private school owners who mm -hmm. may not necessarily be dishing out the quality that they get money for. What oh. a lot of parents do at the end, at the beginning of the term, is to go there to invest a lot of money with the belief that at the end of the day they will see it in quality and character. But I doubt whether we are really getting what we are paying All right, for. so Nigerians can be hopeful then, yes, so to speak. Dr. Wanjo, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. It's a pleasure, Mr.